Hey guys, Ben Laberty here, and I'm with Marianne, and how do you say your last name? Udaveri. Udaveri. It's Hungarian. Hungarian. Yes. Marianne Udaveri, and she's in Ward 4 here in, um, well, we're in Pancor today at the we Central are. Tavern. This is wonderful. They're perfect hosts here. Yeah, and this is the first time we've done a live on location. Okay. So anytime we do a live on location, um, Again, we're going to talk about what they got. <laughs> they have their own Central Tavern uh, beer on tap, and they also have Sons of Kent on tap. So they have that. And let me tell you guys, um, they also have Perch and Pickerel tonight as uh, one of their dinner specials and Shrimp El Forno. So Delicious. Hey, if you guys want to, come out to the Central Tavern here yes. in Pancor, Ontario uh, later tonight for uh, a great dinner. And as you guys know, uh, please share this as well as uh, share your comments, uh, throw in your questions. Uh, hair is on, spot on again. Thanks, Pierre. You're always on top <laughs> of that. Thank you. Hers is pretty fantastic <laughs> as well. So, hey guys, ask your questions, uh, share your ideas and opinions, and we're going to get to it. So, tell me a little bit about you. You have a little wedding business here. Yes, um, I do. Actually, um, I am from Ward 4, obviously, okay. and um, I was raised in uh, just Chatham Township, which is the former Chatham Township, and um, I um, have been living in that area for almost all of my years, um, and uh, with the exception of being away at school, and my parents were farmers in that area, okay. and uh, yeah, so I've had a wonderful upbringing, and, and I certainly love the farming community, and I'm really happy to be where I am. Awesome. Good stuff. Uh, hi, Marianne. Great seeing you since our Festival of Nations days. Oh, thank you so much, Troy. Yes, so you I remember missed the those. Festival of Nations? Yes, um, I was part um, of that committee. And um, yeah, I was Canada Day director. And Troy, oh boy, we had lots and lots of fun. We had a great committee and uh, really, really a lot of fun with everyone. Thank you, you Troy. You know, uh, a lot of people come on here and they talk about the Festival of Nations and yes. they remember it. And how mm -hmm. do we get events? Now, you also do special events as well. Yes. How do we bring stuff like that back to the community? Like, uh, we do have community events. We got mm -hmm. Retro Fest, we got Wambo, we got yes. many other things. But how do we get such an event like that that people, you know, always remember and love? Well, um, actually, that was the former um, mayor, Bill Erickson. That was his idea, part of his platform when he was actually running to become mayor. And he wanted a multicultural event to be held downtown um, somewhere. And um, so he actually, that was his idea, and he got a committee together. And um, actually, it was really well received. Um, and we went on, I can't even tell you how many years that we... Um, we had the festival going and, and I still hear people say as Troy did um, you know how much fun we had and certainly is if we could bring it back I know there are Canada Day celebrations and we are we certainly encourage those and celebrate those um, but there has been um, there has been some more local cultural um, people and joining in as well this year I found because they're really trying to get promote that as well so um, anything to have people come out um, of all walks of life all cultures we certainly welcome that and that was part of the festival of nations that yeah. was part of the whole thing that's great we just need that back everybody mm -hmm. loves that if you like the festival of nations or remember it hit that like button for us uh, hi Karen uh, oh Pierre I was talking about her hair Ben you have such an <laughs> ego well I like I like Ben's too all right so we got two people well one person like my hair hello hi, Karen. Karen hi Gloria hi Gloria okay Pierre, Pierre has a question here yes my my question is, why not make recycling mandatory? Wouldn't it offset our taxes? What are your ideas to lower taxes? Can people earn credits to lower taxes? Pierre, you asked like 13 questions in one here. So let's, let's uh, Those break are it down. some good questions. Why, um, why mm -hmm. not make recycling mandatory? I suppose we could. Um, you would again, um, with the new council coming through, um, you could certainly make that, that suggestion. And as per um, so many things now, um, people are really being concerned with the environment mm -hmm. and what's going on. Um, and of course, with all the plastics and, and um, single use plastics, as right. you know, the bottled water and, um, and the plastic bags and the straws and all of that, we're coming to the realization that um, yes, they were very, um, very handy to have and useful, but they're also causing problems with the environment. So Absolutely. yes, uh, mandatory, quite possible. Um, Good stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see what else uh, he had here. 
wouldn't it offset? Okay, what are your ideas to lower taxes? That's almost an impossible thing, um, but uh, take a shot at it. I think it's for maintaining taxes. Yeah, maintaining. At this point. Um, and um, truly, I think um, depending on what this I, again, I'm going back to the new council, um, what they choose to do. There are different things, of course, that we could think about to try to lower taxes, but they probably would form a committee. Um, and every wants, everyone wants lower taxes. I'm not sure if they would just um, go through the housing or go through other areas in, in how they can do that. And of course, then any um, candidate that I hear, they say, of course, if you lower taxes, then you will kind of miss out on something else because there's only so much money in the budget to spend. So I guess we have to pick and choose what our references are. Um, and if we can lower the taxes, by all means, that would be great. Awesome. Hey, Marjorie Crew, how you doing? Marjorie was on last night. We had a lot of fun. Hello, Marjorie. Uh, she was on for a second time, so we had a, a pretty great, great. chat. Uh, Karen, diversity party will be held in Wallsburg on November 10th. Thank you. Okay, and JP Huggins, keep up the awesome work. Thank Clark you. Ruby, um, beer looked good, yes. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, again, I know it's early, and I know I don't know if it's professional or not. Um, I do That's this on okay my own. That's okay because so, you're the hostess and I'm yeah, your guest, so, so you, you are in charge. They have the Central Tavern, uh, their own lager here, as well as I have uh, a Sons uh, Kent uh, beer. And I'm going to have a take, take a sip here. Tell Ooh. us what you think. It's fantastic. It's always fantastic. And I do like beer, and the beer is good, so they have that on tap here at the Central. So what made you want to run for council? Um, well, I've always been community-minded. I did run in 2010, and I came in third place okay. behind um, Councillor um, Leon LeClaire and right. Councillor Foss. Um, so it's always been something that I wanted to do. I'm very community-minded, and I sit on many, many boards and committees. So it's, uh, someone had asked me that, a friend, and they said, why would you want to do that? And I said, well, it's just what I do. Mm -hmm. So uh, community betterment is really important to me, and of course, um, of course, it's very important for everyone in the community to be happy, to be healthy, um, and to carry on. So, What did you learn in running for the first time the last time around? Like, What did you learn as you were out, uh, communicating with the community? Well, I, I did learn that you have to be competitive, um, and I don't mean, you know, um, with your other people. You just have to have a plan, um, set your plan. Um, some things work better than others and I did learn that the one-on-one -on -one conversations with people um, were definitely wonderful. I had a, a great time because I met so many of my neighbors right. and uh, and new people but also social media did um, play a role in the 2010 election that I that I did run in but now it's just so much more as you're doing this I commend you for what you're doing I've heard so many wonderful things and I've been watching you too so good really stuff. nice and so how's the hair been? Have you awesome. noticed the hair is a bit staying on point it's as Pierre says? Awesome. Okay. So at the end of four years, say let's you get into council, you make council, people vote for you. What would be a great accomplishment four years from, from now? What would you see as your goal? Well, it's always good to leave a lasting, some sort of legacy. Um, and and I'm, I'm a very people-oriented person. Okay. Um, and of course, it's really nice to... Um, to have um, a really healthy environment, right. happy people, um, and of course, it's really important that um, people are working, so it's good to make sure that we have jobs for them, right. um, and however we can get people to a state where they're like, I really like it here in Chatham Kent. We have so much to offer, um, and in Ward 4 as well. We are very, very fortunate. So, however, um, after four years that people can say, or and I can say for myself, that was really good. Um, we did good things. That's the most important thing. Awesome. And uh, let me know if you guys can hear just fine, okay? Because it is a little bit busy in here, which is cool. Uh, but this is my first uh, live on location. So I'm getting used to the idea, That's getting great. used to the sound. Good job. And, and hopefully uh, the sound is coming uh, good. If we need to speak up, let us know. Um, okay, what challenges do you think you face here in Ward 4? And challenges the community of Chatham Kent faces over the next four years. Okay. Um, well, in Ward As Four, I sip my son's go right tent. ahead. Um, in Ward Four, we're primarily agricultural. Now, I sit on the Kent Federation of Agriculture. I'm a director for the Kent Federation of Agriculture, and I'm also a provincial advisory committee member for um, the. Ontario 
Federation of Agriculture. So what we do within that realm and within those organizations, we lobby the government for changes and betterment to agriculture. So if we if we can make things better, now there are some really important things here as well. Now we have infrastructure that we have to deal with, and I know that keeps coming up, but it's it's very very important. We have designated individuals um, that deal with that and sit on different committees as well and try to make sure that these things are done. Um, bridges and roads and, and such are fixed and maintained in a in a timely matter. We have to get to where we're going. We have to get to um, to school. We have to have ambulances out and about in this area. Um, and I there are 800 or uh, 800 or 850 um, bridges right. in this whole municipality, and they all need to um, they all need to be prioritized. Yep. They all need to take priority and make sure that um, they make sure to take care of all those yeah. bridges. So when we talk bridges, mm -hmm. um, most people think bridges like the one uh, in Chatham, like that's mm -hmm. uh, out of service right now. Mm -hmm. But there's tiny bridges that affect so much farm business yes. uh, that people don't realize that are through this massive uh, community. So you, when you're out there, here people are those little, you know, people kind of forget about those all those little well, tiny those bridges. Those are important because, and especially with our rural area. Um, our farmers, our, our people who live out in, in the rural areas, they have to get to the farm. They have to conduct their business. They have to get their, their trucks and their trailers and their tractors and wagons over these bridges. And um, it's really important. Mm -hmm. So um, they couldn't conduct their own private lives and their business lives without having everything in place. Awesome stuff. Hey guys, uh, make sure to ask your questions, share your opinions, uh, your ideas with us, that'd be great. Uh, what are your thoughts on changing the number of counselors and or changing the ward boundaries? Um, I'm not sure so much about the number of counselors. Um, we have um, two people that represent Ward 4, and it's really, um, it is a large ward, and there are also other wards within the municipality that are large as well. We have two people that um, are supposed to um, take care of all concerns and such. Um, and we need to be able to um, be open um, to all of our constituents. We need to be able to be accessible. So I think two people within this whole area, especially for Ward 4, um, we need the two people. Um, now, as far as um, the other question that she had had. Um, oh, let's go back to sorry, it. Uh, just uh, the ward boundaries. The ward boundaries. Yeah. Um, um, I seemingly am okay with the ward boundaries, um, as, as well as just making sure that people know that their service is provided. So if they feel that their counselor is not really giving enough time and attention to their ward, then they should speak up and let us know. Because we just need to know that. We need, obviously, to be approachable. We need to be that type of individual that people can just call or text or what have you and say, I have a problem, do you have a few minutes? Let's chat, so. Awesome. We got Troy Labity, who has a great name. Uh, yes. <laughs> Labity. Uh, Marianne, the health and safety of our Chatham Kent taxpayers is paramount. Can you tell me your thoughts on the level of service the ambulance provides in Chatham-Kent? That is a good question, Troy. Now, I have heard from people in the Dresden area as well as the outskirts um, that sometimes um, if they do need ambulance service, that once they make that 911 call, that they either know that it's at least a 20 minute time frame before they actually get someone there and or what have you, so they, they know there are wait times and that's really unfortunate. I'm not sure if we could have some like, satellite areas. Um, I don't know enough about how the ambulance service um, actually conducts themselves, um, but I do know that people in these areas are saying that the time is way too long and we're talking about lives and, um, and we just can't have that. So one way or the other, um, I'm not sure if they need to establish any other areas where they can prioritize. I know they've just had an, a new ambulance put on board and that's very welcoming, but as I'm sure all of us have needed an ambulance or what have you, even police, um, and you do know that it will take um, a few minutes, so you either have to be prepared. We are offering 
with one of the uh, form, farm organizations that I belong to, um, we are offering some safety um, and um, other programs that people can um, first aid and what have right. you, just in case. It's kind of nice to know, even, um, do you know how to resuscitate anyone? Well, I, uh, I had to do CPR because I was yes. a personal uh, fitness yes. trainer for a while, mm -hmm. so the yeah. greatest worry for me as a trainer with my own studio is always like, I never want to have to call the ambulance, right? Yes. Um, but yeah, a lot of people... And defibrillator? Um, I've. I don't, I'm not trained in doing that, yes. but I've seen people do it, yeah. And, um, but yeah, we need more of those. And that's important. Now, now, I've had the training on it, and now people are saying that perhaps in certain areas that they could have a defibrillator available, like in the arenas, yeah. maybe at different locations, um, little town halls and such, so that at least people know where there is one accessible if they need it. Um, even with the volunteer fire departments, they're saying that they should have them available as well, and if you do call, you might be able to get something um, and someone there in good time. That's a that's a good interesting thing. Defibrillators. We yes. don't talk about no that. because I've never they talked were about that. expensive and they, right. the prices have come down. But um, we do have um, with farm safety. I'm with. I'm on Farm Safety right. Committee, and so we do have grant money that's available, and there are um, different organizations that if they wanted to fill out an application form for some sort of safety item, defibrillators are included, and um, it has to be for a farm use as right. well, um, and so they're more than welcome to fill out an application and send it in. That's a good idea. Yeah. we got to get on top of this defibrillator thing. That's a great mm -hmm. issue. Uh, Craig Waters, Ben, you should ask staff for a shirt. I should. I should have been wearing one, Craig. But the closest thing I have is the uh, Central Tavern Lager That's awesome. uh, mug here. And Perfect. I, did, I didn't know you guys had your own lager here. And, like uh, They wonderful. have their own lager, so that's kind of cool. But they also have, you know, Sons of Kent on tap mm -hmm. uh, as well. And I, I just drink Pepsi, and I'm... That's my, my drink. Oh, you're going to get nailed by the straw here by uh, one well, of our... Uh, Straw, That's okay, and I, and you know what? Um, those straws are on their way out, yep. and um, and and should be. Okay, so let's talk economic development. How yes. do we get more people to open up business here? How do we help uh, the people that are already in business have these small businesses expand and grow? How do we make it easier for them and give them the support they need? Well, um, that is. I'm so glad you asked me because today, um, as hey, Martha. Being, Hi, Martha. As being um, part of Positivity Week, do you know what today is? I do not know. Well, today is um, support your local business. Okay. Is that awesome? So, and we are supporting our local And we are, yes. And um, now that I say that, um, I should show you, I will get right back to that question. I should show you what I brought for you. Oh, because this more stuff is, for me. This is now, this is my sign from home, okay. and I am um, part of this by Local by Fresh. All right. Now, what we do, I'll give you our Leo, map. I got a map. Yes. So, the best part is that um, this is a by Local okay. by Fresh map. Now, we have 44 participants on this map. Right. And um, this is our 10th year with this initiative of buying local by fresh. Okay. And it shows all of the various places on the map within the municipality. Cool. That have local uh, food, uh, local products, local producers, and um, and we have made this now. This is our 10th year. Right. And we make this map every two years. So um, we are going to be making a new one in the spring. So if anyone is interested in being on our map, and certainly in Ward 4, you can see that we have right. certain um, different ones, like Jen and Family. Yep. And uh, we also have um, the um, Early Acres Estate Winery. You even got Sons of Sons Ken. You got Bayside yes. Brewing. Yes. The only stipulation oh. is that you have to have um, certainly a local product. Okay. And and so we certainly welcome anyone who's interested um, to give us a call, fill out an application. It's it's very inexpensive to be included with this. Yep. And um, we have um, we have lots of support. So we're, we're looking forward to a new map, and we also have a website, and everything is. Um, 
connected to the Economic Development Department and okay. Tourism. So um, this is a really popular item. Buy local, buy fresh, chathamkent.com yes. is a website. Okay. And that is very cool. I like it. Um, and it leads into another thing. Yes. And we're going to probably talk a little bit louder because we do uh, okay. have a little background here. Um, but Chatham Kent consumes less vegetables than many other areas on Ontario. Yes. And if we had more buy local, buy fresh, especially, you know, yes. I see a lot of farming here, the farm market type yes. stuff, That's I think we could uh, yeah. possibly be healthier. Right? It is. You know what? It, the nice part about buying local and buying fresh, you get to know your farmer and or your neighbors. Right. It's all fresh. It is safe. And the uh, best part is, is that you, you can buy it, you can buy whatever amount you want. And it's right here, right here, right here, right in here. your community, growing yes. in your community. And, um, and you know what, people just love it. it right now, um, I know that um, peaches are peaches and pears and apples and all of that good stuff are coming on. The tomatoes are, <clears throat> excuse me, um, tomatoes are on. Um, we have quite a variety. We have so many wonderful things that, that we grow and produce right here in Chatham Kent. So, awesome. So, yeah, we're very fortunate. I know it shows up opposite, by, but very buy local, healthy. buy fresh. Yes, thank you. And you, you support your local farmer. Yes. Right? And your local business. So, good Perfect. stuff. Now, where were we on answering the other question there? Uh, did we have another question? I don't know. I think, well, Troy. Hi, Troy. Um, excellent answer. Thank you so much. You'll be in contact with me and sit and discuss. I appreciate that. Call good me stuff. anytime. Awesome appreciate stuff. it. Thanks. To, okay, so, good to see you again. So, what else can we do to help uh, small business grow? Well, um, obviously economic development within the municipality, they really do their part. Um, there are certain individuals within, um, there's obviously the agricultural aspect with Kim Cooper, um, and then we have the other businesses um, and other people that are working within that department as well. Um, and it's, it's great. The nicest part about it is that you can go there, um, access information, they can assist you. Right. And, and I think part of that is um, if anyone has any ideas whatsoever that they think if you're an entrepreneur right. and you'd be interested, um, give them a call. They'd be more than happy to spend some time, answer some questions for you, um, maybe help you fill out some forms, at least give you some information so that you can make um, a, a, a decision and think, is this for what, what I want to do? And sometimes right. you might just have a business that it's like it starts out part time. And then you expand yes, and grow. Yes, and that happens in so many with so many people, like in in their garages and in some people in their kitchens. There's so many people that have such gifts and such talents that once they actually start, yeah. um, and, and people know what they do and what they sell and what they have, it, it's great. It really kind of mushrooms and, and who knows, could be a great success. And I always think everybody out there is a future entrepreneur in some way when they that one idea or that one mm -hmm. passion comes forward. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's my mom, Margo Labadee. Hello, so, Margo. Nice <laughs> I'll have to meet your mom. You will have to meet my mom. I did, I did have a friend and he, he's actually very clever, but he also said that he would definitely become an entrepreneur because he's very lazy no. right and he will find the <laughs> easiest way to do something and therefore he will create something that will be of service to other people as well and there you go awesome Instant stuff entrepreneur <laughs> so um <laughs> let's go tourism let's talk yes. tourism we're in ward four you got mitchell's bay yes. out there uh, a lot of great stuff. Agra tourism is also on the yes, rise, and, and you know, with wineries and breweries and yes. stuff. What can we do to bring tourism number one board for and the Chatham Kent as a whole? Um, well, I'm so glad you asked. I am on the tourism advisory committee, um, and now it's um, we have had a study, and so within the study there has been three phases. Now, first of all, the um, the, the there's been uh, sorry, there's been a phase as far as history, like Black history, right. the underground. Railroad and all of that sort of thing that is so popular. We have people coming from all over Uncle Tom's Cabin, yep. all over the world that just want to see this, and they're and they're just so very impressed. Um, and some of them have family from here, and it's really great. Second phase um, now, of course, we have the boating, we have the marinas, we have all of the wonderful water. Mm -hmm. and camping and such, fishing and hunting, and that um, that also has become um, something that 
the Tourism Committee has been working on as well. And of course, phase three becomes the agricultural. Right. So unfortunately, um, when I first um, was hearing about the different levels of phases, I thought, oh, agricultural is at the bottom. But it's worked out perfectly because it is in correlation with the IPM. Right. So in fact, the timing couldn't be better. The International Plowing Match. Yes, I'm Illinois sorry, IPM. International Plowing Match. And uh, so yeah, the timing couldn't be better. So it's worked out perfectly as far as the agricultural aspect and uh, assisting tourism. And what they're really wanting to do is to really encourage people to buy local, buy fresh, and go to some of these uh, places that um, people have things for sale, right? right. So fruits, vegetables, um, there's beef, there's um, pork, there's everything that you can imagine. They're really encouraging people to get out there and see what we have. Right. Awesome stuff. Okay, Karen has another question here, and let's see here. Since part of Ward 4 is split by Ward 5, Wallsburg, do you feel that Ward 4 councillors should be familiar with what their concerns are in Wallsburg, or is that just a job of Ward 5 councillors? No. And this goes through not only just Ward yes. 4, Ward 5, but there's Wards 1, 2, 3, 4, exactly. 5, and 6. And you know what? That's a great, um, great question, Karen. I appreciate that. Um, I think um, all the councillors should know exactly what's going on in Wallaceburg and at any time. Um, yes, because Ward 4 is on the cusp of Wallaceburg, Ward 4 uh, councillors should know exactly what's going on. They should be helping to um, improve things in Wallaceburg and make things extra special. Um, and, I, and I think as a councillor, at least from my point of view, yes, you represent your ward and you want all the best things for your ward, but you are also um, demonstrating um, the need and um, you just have to speak on the whole municipality right. as a whole. So when you're actually voting for something, you have to think big picture here. Is it going to help everyone and, and try to make the right decisions? Awesome stuff. Hey Sue, how are you? Sue's part of my 6 a.m. walking group. Hello, hey guys. Sue. Uh, if you're wondering why you don't see a couple curtains in the background here, we're at the Central Tavern here in Pancor in Ward 4. And uh, let me tell you, I'm going to tell you that the dinner specials tonight are perch and pickerel and shrimp al forno. And they also have Sons of Kent on tap as well as Central Tavern Lager. That's awesome. So if you're wondering, if you just joined us and you know why there's people in the background roaming around, we are at the Central Tavern here in Pancor. If you've ever been here, uh, give me a thumbs up there. Now speaking of agritourism, I have yes. something for you. So as you know, oh. you you can open that. Oh, and okay, everyone's saying recycle bag. Okay, this this one you can. Okay. Oh, we got some stuff. This is gonna be good. Oh, that's a cool hat. Is that plowing match hat? An international plowing match mm -hmm. hat. Okay. There's more. Okay. Wow. Okay. This looks like a sweater. Oh, jeez. It is. So when you get, we hope you come to the match. Of course, you'll be I, I there. I think I'm going to be there. Yes, for sure. And you'll be all decked out. I'll have my own gear. Right? <laughs> I was going to get you some really cool glasses, but I guess you have some. Okay, well, so you, you know. That, for the next people, if you want to get me glasses, okay. <laughs> but uh, you know, I have I have a 6 a.m. walking group. Yes. Um, every day, and um, it's getting a little cold. So yeah, this sweater so, you know, is going to come in handy. Honestly, it looks so nice. I hope it fits you. If not, um, I'm sure they, um, I'm sure they can switch oh, it for yeah. you. That looks actually, that's a good sweater. You got the that part right there. Really and cool. a hoodie. Yeah. So thank you very You're much. You're very welcome. And here is the official IPM show guide. Oh. So you'll know exactly what's wow, going on. There's a lot of stuff in here. Yeah, I think they're hot off the press. Um, so there's a big schedule here. Yes. Now, what, you know, a lot of people up here heard the international plumbing match. Yes. I hear 80,000 people potentially yes. are coming. Yes. What are they doing? Okay, just give us, a, if you could give us a rundown, what happens at the International Plowing Match? Well, they call it the Tented City, and because it's a plowing match, it is ideally um, people plow. I had the um, I had the wonderful experience of plowing um, just a few weeks ago. Yourself on a tractor? I, I'm a home girl. Okay. And uh, I, I swear, people were like, oh my goodness, she's on a tractor, but the best part was no one really knew that we had a tractor almost exactly like that at right. home. And yes, um, I'm from a farm and uh, we had to load up tomatoes and cucumbers and all that fun stuff so I drove right my brothers were loading and my dad was loading as well so 
funny enough, um, we did. I, th I think they thought, oh my god, she's on a tractor, but I, I was like, hey, this is very cool. Were people concerned? I, well, I think initially, I think they were, but I found the brakes and we're all good. So, um, so now, yeah, there's lots and lots of, there's lots of plowing and there are so many different levels of plowing. And um, we were looking at the map last night, I was at a um, meeting for the plowing match, and uh, there's quite a large area just um, restricted just for plowing. And of course we have Queen of the Furrow and they have to plow as well. As, yes, um, so that's really good. Now we have this huge tented city. Okay. Um, we have this huge RV park because people People like to come and stay right and they'll park their tents campers what have you right on the site and so they'll be able to take part in everything all all week wow. um, and then we have Guinness Book of World Records I'm on that committee which is really fun okay so we have some really interesting things um, the longest um, spoon and egg run the most people bobbing for apples at one. You have to come. Oh, I want to be a part of the spoon. Yes, run. do it, do it. Spoon and egg. Yes, spoon and egg. Um, the most um, people bobbing for apples at one time. The largest Caesar drink. Okay. The largest Caesar drink. We found out from Guinness that it has to be a cocktail. So yes, the Is vodka. It, be, it has to be vodka in it. Yes. So, and it's going to be, this is the best part, we have actually secured Snoop Dogg's glass <laughs> from when he made that great big cocktail. We were having it shipped from California. Really? Yes, and, it, and it's going to be great fun, but we um, we have a celebrity chef, Bob Bloomer. Okay. He's coming to help us with that. We have Brian Machado from the uh, Breakfast House. Yep. He's helping, um, and we need a lot of people and a lot of volunteers. It's five hundred um oh i want to say gallons but not gallons 500 liters, liters yes of tomato juice of uh, uh, the vodka will be in there the uh, lemons the you name it so 500 liters that's yes. 250 of the two liter bottles of like pop that you would normally see that mm -hmm. that's a big so come on out big caesar yes we, uh, we have lots of juicers, we ha will need lots of help. But, uh, Is there a certain day that's on? Yes, that's going to be on Wednesday, September the 19th. Why do you know that so, so well? Are you going to well, be there for sure? I'm going to be there. Okay. And how can people, uh, who drinks this summer? Is there, you there's... know what, we're going, I'm assuming, um, this is our plan so far, that we will be giving it away um, and or, yes, we'll have to, because it will have alcohol in yep. it, we Something will legal. prepare it yep. under our tent and then we will have to move it to the hospitality tent right. for licensing purposes and such. So please come out. Everyone is welcome. And uh, if you have a chance to um, check either online or check one of the programs, we have a bunch of different Guinness World Records. And um, we would love to have as many people come out as possible. And a ton of community sponsors. Yes. That's great. So we're really looking forward to it. And so many people, um, neighbors and relatives, everyone seem seemingly is volunteering. Um, it's it's just massive and um, it's really really wonderful to have it here. Last time we had it here was 1979. Okay, and I, I've driven by the yes, you know exactly, the, the brick yeah. down on 40 thing. Highway. Yep. Yes, and Maynard Grove. Yeah. So hello, Nicole. How are you? Thank you, Nicole. That's you great. Have, I appreciate that. You have a motor. Good You're stuff. awesome. Appreciate <laughs> it. Okay, so the international plowing match. Yes. It's going to have 80,000 people here. Well, okay. they, they said um, 80 to 100,000 wow. people. They come, they look, they stay the day. Some of them stay like the whole week. Right. It's um, really very interesting. So our population is going to boost for a day. Yes. How do we get our population to grow continuously mm -hmm. throughout besides events like this? Mm -hmm. How can we, because we have a, a decreasing population yes. over the last 10, 15 years. Mm -hmm. What can we do to kind of change that and get back on the right track of growing? Well, um, of course, we need to invite more people here. Um, right. and, and I know it sounds really funny, but they really encourage um, families to have children because they right. will have more children and more people will pay taxes, etc., etc. So we need an influx of um, individuals. Um, and um, honestly, it can just be... Um, 
people just coming from wherever. Right. Um, Chatham is definitely, Chatham and the surrounding area is such a popular area. Um, and we've just been noted um, as being one of the better or best places, um, 67th um, as best places to live. Um, out so, of a yeah. lot, out of a lot. So, yeah, so I have maybe the, I 66 have the figures. in front of us now, but there's yes. a lot more behind and us. And I have the figures here, but I won't uh, <laughs> spend all that time. But yeah, so we are actually growing in popularity here. We have so much to offer, and um, I'm sure anyone who lives here can save the very same. We have water, we have opportunity, we have safe, healthy food for people, we have um, education for people. You name it, yeah. we have it here, and we just have to promote it more, and more people will come down. Awesome. Let's talk about uh, things I like to talk about. Yep. Uh, sportsplex. Yes. Multi sportsplex yes. most likely uh, would have to go in an area like Chatham, yes. uh, which is Ward 6. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of a twin pad arena, a spot for indoor soccer, indoor football, flag football, and stuff like that. Awesome. Where do you stand on that? Do you support that? And how would we fund that if you do? Well, I definitely support that. Um, now, funding, of course, we'd have to either find the money, um, have some different sponsors actually raise the money. But, you know, I found, even in this community, because I'm, I'm just in awe all of the time, right. this community is very generous. And I think when someone actually has an idea, you'd be surprised how quickly people get on board and help. Um, the same with the plowing match. There's yes. so many people volunteering. And with different um, things that I have been involved with in, in the um, last little bit, right. um, and primarily with some of my agricultural organizations, I ask businesses and such for donations and, and food, right. which go um, to the food bank and Salvation Army. You just have to ask and unbelievably people um, just come out and say, okay, we'll do that and it's amazing. Truly. So yeah, as far as um, the um, arena, I'm definitely for that. We, um, our family has always played hockey. Um, I figure skated um, five days a week, if you can imagine. So I was at the arena Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday all day because I taught on Saturdays and Sundays. So. We were there, right. and, and my other play, brother played hockey as well. So, and it was great. We got to meet people in town. We live just outside of the city, so primarily rural. And so, when we get into town and we participate in these sports and such, we met people from town. Right which was really nice as far as rural and urban is concerned. And there's still, you know, some of them are some of my very best friends now. So you never forget those, you know, friendships that you make even as a child, right? Right, absolutely. So it would definitely um, improve the economy. Of course, we have the casino moving into um, yep. Ward 6 as well. So we'll have the casino, we'll have the Holiday Inn, we'll have um, places for people to stay, and of course the Twin Arena and, and whatever other luxury things will come with that with, because they just usually come, right? Well, they, they kind of grow. So when people yeah. see things happening, other things happen beside it. Okay, we got yeah. a question here. So yeah. hi, Janet. Hi, Janet. Uh, Janet has. How specifically will you try to help the smaller communities of Chatham Kent, such as Pancor, mm -hmm. where you are currently? Mm -hmm. We can't even get garbage pickup unless we pay extra, which seems ridiculous mm -hmm. as we are just outside of Chatham. And thank you so much, Janet. I agree with you 100%. Um, I struggle with the same thing. I do not have garbage pickup where I live. And I mean, I love to go to the dump, I'll be honest with you, because I see the neighbors. But you either you'll, have you'll to You'll never go. hear anybody else say, I love to go to the dump, OK? Well, I'll it's be first. honest it's with you, it's, it's fun because um, you see all the neighbors. And I mean, you stand in line and get ready to throw your garbage into this big thing. But um, truly, it is an inconvenience. Um, I'm sure you feel the same way. Uh, truly, it would be so nice if I could just dispose of my garbage at the end of the lane, not having to put it into a car or a truck or wait for the best time if it's raining, you don't want to haul all your garbage out. So I definitely would support that. There has to be a way that people can have their garbage picked up. I know uh, closer to me, just a few roads over, these people are able to get that done. Some of them I do believe pay privately, but there's got to be a way within this huge municipality to work that out. Okay, awesome. And she had, or even better, police coverage in the area. Yes, and police coverage is necessary. 
Um, so by all means, um, uh, there has to be some sort of study done. Um, and I know from working um, for the municipality, I formerly worked for the municipality, and so I was the marketing coordinator for the Downtown Chatham Business Improvement Association. And um, what we had found is once we um, had an opportunity to sit down with the police chief, he explained um, exactly where um, our policing was happening within our area, why it was um, there was a certain policing here and, and maybe not as much but at different times um, and locations. So it's, I think it's a really important matter. Um, and of course, I'm in, I live in a rural area as well. Right. I'm so happy to see the police cars go by. Like yep. truly, I'm like, oh great. Um, glad they're out and glad to see them. So hopefully we'll be able to work that out and have something that um, will keep people safe, at least feeling safe. And if they need any sort of um, policing, that they know it's going to be there within a good time. Awesome. Hello, Marianne. You have to be. Hello, you, yes. you have to be involved in the flyer like on the flyer for the shopping local, this flyer here, to display or hand out your flyers. If not, I'd be happy to hand them out at the, to the customers here at the Healthy Ferry. Oh, thank you, Wes. Um, no, you do not. Um, we have given um, flyers um, to all of our participants, but we have excess. We uh, we hand them out at uh, economic development, um, special events, anything that's agriculture related. But by all means, um, we are we have a few, a few boxes left. I know we're going to use some at the plow match but uh, I can certainly pop by and uh, can get drop West some hooked off. Up. yeah thank you good stuff appreciate okay. that hey guys get your last uh, questions here your comments your opinions uh, please share them um, what else do we got here um, the rail line the rail yes, line the okay. rail line yes um, you know it goes from Chatham Dresden yes. Wallsburg uh, I'd like to make it the Great Ontario Marathon yes. Trail, and the reason being because it's exact distance of a marathon. Uh, where do you stand for that? Like, what kind of ideas you have? Well, I applaud what you consider to be, I mean, you have to do something with right. it, right? Um, initially, when it was purchased, and for the um, original reasons, I believe, I was certainly not, I was not in agreement with that. Now, that's my own opinion, right. and mine only, um, so I don't believe that the taxpayers' dollars were used um, beneficially for everyone. I know they had an idea. You're not alone on that. Okay. Yes, I know they had an idea, and maybe they thought they could really work something out and incorporate some other businesses to um, to use it but as it seems it has not worked out um, so yeah I think it's great um, trail on uh, trail on okay. <laughs> Joanne Dunlop Sinclair hey Joanne garbage pickup for rural is defeated something we need it is extremely difficult for myself or my husband to get to the dump so we have to pay extra which infuriates me mm -hmm. Uh, that I have to pay when I already pay more for many other services. So she's on the same thing as yes, everybody else. Yeah, and I'm, you know what? Um, honestly, it is something that really needs to be brought up. I do know the individual in charge, and, and I know that he is trying, but I, again, it goes right back to council. I'm sure that it has to be debated and it has to be voted upon. <laughs> And I think people need to bring it forward and bring it forward and bring it forward until some good things are happening. Yes. Personally, I'm I'm in the same boat. Awesome. So it would be wonderful. Okay, get your last questions in here. Um, and uh, let's see here. Again, we are at the Central Tavern, where tonight they have a perch and pickerel dinner as well as shrimp al forno, and they have Sons of Kent on tap that I'm having uh, a sip of right now, and they got their own lager. Central awesome. Tavern Water. And you know what? We're probably going to come back and talk to you even more. Nice glasses, too. I Great love Great glasses. Mugs. Good stuff. And I got a bunch of gifts here. Yeah. So um, if you could tell your um, voters here, mm -hmm. what separates you from everybody else? Why should they be voting for you in this upcoming election for Ward 4 here? Well, um, I do have um, experience. I do have experience through the um, farm organizations that I belong to. So I belong to the Kent Federation of Agriculture and the Ontario Federation of Agriculture. I'm on the policy advisory committee for the Ontario Federation um, of Agriculture. So we lobby the government for changes to agriculture. Now those organizations are huge and vast and they get things done. So once you've um, become comfortable with um, being able to uh, stand your ground, state your position, and 
certainly try to get things done. Um, that that is really necessary, and it takes someone to stand up for change. So if you're able to do that. Um, just have to stand up, ask what people want. Um, I'm certainly approachable. I think most people know where to find me. Um, I am out and about within the community and I, and I love it. Um, please give me a call. Um, and if there is anything at all, I would love to be your counselor for Ward 4. Um, yeah, and awesome. thank you. Awesome, so this has been great. Hey guys, she's gonna be able to get um, asked questions in and that's all we got today, but we will And I am later. certainly in favor of um, helping the water well issues. Those are my neighbors, Joanne. Um, so, I definitely, something needs to be done apparently today in the news. Um, there has been something that um, the provincial uh, government is going to at least look into, or they mentioned that they um, will do um, some sort of survey. So, thank you, my goodness. Uh, yes, though everyone. They're my neighbors, so I feel obligated to like help, and I and I applaud Kevin and everything that he's done. I respect everyone for their opinions, and yeah, something needs to be done. Awesome. Okay, thank you guys very much, thank and uh, thank you to Kelly and everybody here, the yes. staff at the Central It'll Tavern here in Vancouver. And yeah, so Pictures. make sure you come out and visit here, and uh, we will talk to you later, and you'll be back on, right? I'll be back. So we will thank have her back so on. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Appreciate guys. It. Have a great day.